If you've already seen the Matrix Code Rain video, then you'll recognize my Matrix Font Atlas here, and you'll probably recognize a number of the techniques that we'll be using in this video. I'm going to drive the Matrix Font with a normalized output from the UV Grid node, and I'll drop in some vector math nodes to account for the scale and so on. There are eight cells horizontally to my atlas, so I'll enter one divided by eight, and seven vertically, so one divided by seven. And there we have the first cell of my atlas. I'm going to set that atlas to a texture interpolation of closest to avoid this uh, bordering that we see happening. Duplicate this vector math node and plug in the random color to the top input. Set the operation to snap, drag that down a touch. I'm going to duplicate that vector math node, plug the snap node into the top, and set the operation of this duplicate to add. Now we have a randomly selected grid of our characters. I'm going to tidy these nodes up a touch. Now let's get some masks. We're going to begin with a character mask, by which I mean a mask which will remove selected characters from the grid, just to make it all look a little more natural. I'll use a separate RGB node to separate the random color. Let's have a look at the red channel. Drop in a math node, and I'll set the operation to less than. And now I can control how many of the cells are white with this variable right here. The higher the number, the more cells there are present. So I can multiply the output of my texture here, which I'm going to convert from a color to a value with a separate RGB node. Drop on a multiply node and multiply by my mask output. There we go. Now I can randomly deselect or erase characters from the grid. Let's go a little further. We can change the length of each line of text to make it look like some writing. We'll do that with a separate XYZ, which will separate the stepped output. And let's have a look at the X channel. I'm going to drop in another math node and set it to less than. This will now be a line length mask, but for now all the lines are the same length. I can get a random value per line by using the Y output to drive a white noise texture. I'll make it one dimensional and I'll use the value output to drive the threshold of my less than node. Let's preview that. And there we go. We got some random length lines. I'll introduce that mask by multiplying the output of the character mask. There we go. To create the typing animation, we're going to do a very similar thing to what we've done here. So let's get a copy of that separate XYZ. We'll be using the stepped output again. Let's get another less than node. And we can use that one to sweep back and forth across our X channel. However, you'll see that if I add the Y channel to the X channel, that sweeping becomes diagonal. And furthermore, if I multiply, the X channel by the height value, which in this case is 0.1. You'll see that I can now sweep through the rows sequentially, meaning when one row is complete, we pass on to the next. So we can definitely take advantage of that, but I'm going to need to invert the vertical direction. For now, the first character would be in the bottom left. I want it to be in the top left. So I'll do that by inverting the Y channel very simply. I'm going to subtract it from one. And there we go. Now we've got our typing mask. Moving in the direction we want. So let's introduce that to the final mask result. And now with this value, we can sweep through the typing animation, character by character, and then line by line. Now you'll see when I get to one, I'm just about to pass on to the last line and start to type that line. And at this point, I want to introduce the scrolling effect where all of the text will be scrolling upwards. So let's remember that I want that scrolling to start to happen when this value hits one. Let's have a look at the sizes for a second. I'm going to introduce some value nodes so I can access the size variables from other places in the network. I'll set them both temporarily at 0.1, hook them up to width and height. And I'm going to use that same output there to drive the multiply node, multiplying the X output. 
And now I can change the sizes of my characters by changing these values. Let's go for something a little smaller. 0 0.04 and 0 0.05, for example. Scrolling still looks good. I'm going to remove a few more characters to make it look a little more natural. There we go. Okay, now to create the scrolling effect, we're going to manipulate the UV map which drives the UV grid. We'll begin by splitting it apart and then putting it straight back together again. Both the X and the Y channel are necessary, and that allows us to drop a math node onto the Y channel. I'll set it to subtract, and I can now scroll the text up and down with this value right here. Now I want to constrain this, uh, this scrolling effect to the height of a line, and I'll do that with a math node set to snap. I'm going to plug the height variable into the bottom and the result of the snap into the subtract node. And now I can scroll the text with the top value of the snap. And it is in fact constrained to the height of a line. Excellent. Now then, these two animations, these two parts of the animation are clearly dependent. So I'm going to drive them both with the same value node. I'll plug that into the top of the snap and the bottom of the less than node. I'll drag that node down a little bit so that I can account for this one second offset that I wanted to introduce. And I'll do that very simply with a math node set to subtract. I'll subtract one, but I want to avoid any negative scrolling happening over here. So I'll use a math node set to maximum and set zero as the bottom input, and that'll prevent any negative scrolling. Now, as I increase this variable, the lines get typed, the page gets filled, and as we hit the bottom, the scrolling starts to happen. Perfect. You can actually control the point at which the scrolling starts to happen by manipulating this variable here. You'll probably want to constrain that variable again to the height value like we did with this snap node. So I'll actually duplicate that snap node and drag that up here, set that to one temporarily, and plug that into the subtract. Now, if I back off the scrolling and the typing just a touch, I can change actually where this scrolling starts to happen. It'll let now start to happen at point three four of the screen, which looks like just about there. And in fact, if I advance, the scrolling is there. If I go backwards, there we got the lines starting to come in. Let's move the cutoff point a little further down the screen. Point eight. Advance the animation, and there's the scrolling. Perfect. So this has very clearly become our time variable. So I'll set that up to be exactly that. I'll type in hash frame, and that gives me the numerical representation of the current frame, which I will divide by the frame rate of my blend file, which is 30. I'm also going to add a multiply node so I can control the speed of the animation because if I play at the speed of one, you'll see that it is decidedly too fast. Let's reduce that quite a bit, 0.2. Okay, that looks better. You can see the lines being typed. And the scrolling is happening at a pleasing rate. Regarding the length of the lines and how long they take to be typed, for now they all take exactly the same amount of time, regardless of their length. If you watch carefully, let me scroll back a little bit. It's very mechanical. One line takes the same amount of time to appear as the previous one did. We can change that a little bit to make the text look decidedly more organic by right here, just after the multiplication of the X component. Drop in a math node, we'll set it to divide, and we're going to divide by the line length variable right here. And now you'll see that shorter lines actually take longer to appear. Or more to the point, longer lines appear more quickly. I think that's a better way to put it. But you'll see that now there is something more of an organic feel to the typing. Okay, so that's all the animation in place. One final thing to do, I'm going to pixelate the whole display by pixelating the UV map, the main UV map, which drives the UV grid right here. I'm going to use another UV grid. I'll set the sizes to something very small, 0.002. Drop that onto the noodle and swap the output noodle into the stepped output. Let's turn on step correct. Turn on offset correct and introduce an offset of 
Now I'll add a UV distance node and I'm going to use the normalized output to drive it. Let's have a look at what that gives us. Add a math node and swap the noodle into the bottom. 0.5 in the top will be fine, but set the operation to subtract. Duplicate that node, set it to divide and turn on clamp. And now reduce this value to reduce the edge of your disk. This will help with the glowing effect. And we're going to introduce that to the mix of masks that we have down here. I'll use a math node, drop it onto the noodle immediately after the character mask. And the result of this divide node goes into the bottom. And there you go. One final thing, we'll use this to drive the emission of our principal shader right here. Grab ourselves a color mix node or a mix RGB, whatever you prefer to call it. The result of my network here will drive the mix factor. I'll set the top color to black and the bottom to matrix greeny blue, nicely saturated and nicely bright. That goes into the emission and I'm going to add another color mix node. I'll set the operation to divide and into the bottom color. I'm going to type into all three channels 0.01. And there we go. We got some very nice glow and you can change the intensity of the glow with this factor slider. Not bad at all, huh? Let's make it look a little bit more like a screen. Back to the principal shader. And first of all, I'll introduce some world lighting. Now I'm going to darken the screen, make it almost black, not quite, but almost. I'll drop in an IOR specular with an IOR of about 1.56, something like that. That'll drive my specular and my IOR, and I'll set a nice low roughness. And there you have it, automatically typing and scrolling alien text, matrix code, whatever way you want to look at it. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.